Hey everybody, it's Jochen Haydn and I'm back with the Desert Wolf versus Railway Ace Warner Pacific Campaign. This is scenario one with the stacking limits and today we'll be looking at the 16th of November 1942 combat replay. Let's get it. Okay, welcome back. We're with Desert Wolf and Railway Ace. This is November 16th, 1942. So you may recall last turn we saw a big old bombing attack at Naru that really got my dander up. So we'll see what happens this time. Coast Watchers. Okay, no um no night bombing but the moonlight's low. Bummer. That's a bummer. <sighs> Sub escapes detection. Dang it. Remember how I was showing you guys how um, Desert Wolf had moved up his, his submarine patrols kind of deeper into the marshals and stuff? Well, looks like old Takashima ain't going to see the light of day again. There it goes. Bummer, man. Those S boats, man, get it done with their Mark 10 torpedoes. They don't have the same issues that the the newer uh, Mark 14 torpedoes have. Okay, we're back into daylight now. More Coast Watchers. Oh, we got a rowboat here. And they miss, of course. So this is the Japan, uh, American, not American, it, it allied uh, mine layer, but they do have some sort of ASW capability here. Not much, but some. And the, uh, the rowboat 68 gets away. Okay, now we're in AM air operations phase. Hmm. Okay, so the PPYs are dropping some bombs and some stuff here. Okay, sweep. Uh, look at that nice big red line. I wonder, I've always wondered, like, some, some days it'll give you just a little sliver and you kind of have to figure it out. And there's other times where it draws lines straight to the base it came from. Uh, I don't know why that is, but all right. Some sweeps over Tungi. I can guarantee you there's going to be no Japanese aircraft left to fly up there. Oh. That could be something. Wow. So some P-38s uh, just flew in to Nauru. And interestingly enough, Warway has no cap up today. I wonder why. Good thing. Oh, bummer. Let's see what we get here. Bombs hit city. So these are the Liberators coming in from, I guess, Lido. Oh, no, it's a port strike.
All right, so the repair shipyard took some hits. That's going to cost him 2,000 supply to repair that. And it looks like one AK gets one hit and is on fire in port. I assume these guys came from L Lido again. Man, look at that range. Look at it. How do they do it? And more B-24s coming in now. There's no cap up at all. And I and I don't blame them. This is so far away you would never think that it'd be bombed, right? But nothing is really out nothing is really outside the reach of these liberators, right? And this this is a Oh, wait a minute. No, this isn't Hong Kong. This is Haiphong. I thought we were hitting Hong Kong again. So this was Haiphong. Uh, these these B-24s are operating at their extended range. So I guess the reason that he's doing this, and I'm just guessing, is that he wanted to see if any of the aircraft from Tungi were sent there just to, to get them out of the way. Because other than that, I don't really see any major importance to Haiphong. But... Or maybe he's just trying to be unpredictable and, and shaking things up. Jeez, he's really going after Haiphong. I don't know really why. Yeah, these guys are definitely at Alito. Well, this was a port strike this time. And an AK was caught in port. One bomb hit on fire. So half of these guys went for the airbase and half went for the port. not going to be good. <sighs> Where is the cap today? They're just not there. Uh, he pulled them out, I guess. So, now the... Now the allies get the bomb for free. And we'll see what, what comes of it. Not pretty at all. Mavis destroyed. Two Nicks. Some more recon planes. Yeah, not good. A lot of hits in the base, too. Some stragglers coming in. Good thing that there's no aircraft in cap. Oh, man. They still destroy more aircraft. More stragglers still. More aircraft destroyed on the ground. And more bombers again. Oh. This is just hurting me to see this. I hate this. Damn, another another attack on High Pong. I don't, okay. I don't really get why unless he's just searching out for aircraft. Some more sweeps over Tungi, but there's nothing there. And again. Still the AM phase. Hmm. P38Gs, huh? I know who that is. That's that's uh, Richard Bong and his friends. Okay, back to Tungi. Nothing there. More P38s. Golly. That's a lot of P38s. Okay, that's your AM phase. Now we're going to go into the PM phase. Ooh, listen. <gasps> that's a sub. A sub just sank, guys. A sub just sank. That might be the I-21. Remember last turn, the Intel report said the I-21 sank? I didn't believe it, but now that I heard something like that, that's the sound of a submarine sinking. 
So I bet you it was the I-21 that went down. Huh. It must have been really badly damaged then. Okay, more pain coming in for Tungi. Let's see if there's anything left on the ground to blow up. No, there isn't. Oh, I take it back. There is more damaged aircraft that are now destroyed. Yeah, now they're out of aircraft, right? Okay, that's it for your air phase. Now we're going into the ground combat phase. Something else just sank. You hear that? That's a Japanese ship. I bet you it's one of the ones that sank um, that were hit in port. Or the one that was hit by a torpedo yesterday. Who knows? There's been so many Japanese ships hit the last few days. It could be anything. Another bombardment at Lanchow. You're killing me. We're away. You're killing me. Come on, bro. Come on. Attack already. Just killing me. And he bombards here again. Wait, waste it. Waste the supply. Oh! Okay, a Japanese bombardment at Tonki. Well, they're a sign of life over here, huh? I I think he was just kind of testing to see what was there. So now he knows, right? One division and some... Uh, and some arty regiments. Alright, there it is. I seven. Why do you even need Lido to have a size seven fort? Like, I don't think the Japanese will ever go up there again. We'll see if we get any reinforcements here. Okay, some ships so far, AKs, a new base force at Tillamook, another naval construction at Port Wainimi. There it is. Okay. Nothing is outside of the reach of these B-24s. These guys are crazy. All right. For this turn, uh, another bad day for the Japanese. We're getting used to that, right? Uh, okay. The Japanese lost 25 aircraft. The Allies, two. So far, we're seeing nine of these Dinas destroyed underground. More Nicks destroyed. A6M5s. Some Oscars. Some Tojos. Another Mavis. And the Glen on the ground, which I'm pretty sure is our proof that the I-21 is finally sunk. Because uh, they carry those type of float planes. The Allies lost one PBA-4 and a P-40K. No pilots lost here. The Army lost points for this turn. It went up three for the Japanese. And none for the Allies. Ship sunk. This turn, uh, the Takashima, which is a cruiser mine layer, was sunk by a Mark 10 torpedo from, I believe, the S-46 near Mili. And we also heard the, a submarine sinking sound. 
and I believe that to be the I-21, which is reported to sunk last turn, but I think it actually sunk this turn. For the turn, the Allies went up 29 points to bring the Japanese win ratio down to 1.593. Every day, he's chipping away at it. Okay, looked at the uh, combat report, didn't see anything noteworthy. Looked at SIGINT. I didn't see anything that stood out to me as super important. And the ops report, I scanned through here. Uh, a couple notes here. It looks like we have the Lexington is ready to go at Pearl Harbor. It's the first of the carriers to come back online after their refits. And uh, near the bottom here, we see that the Takashima was in fact reported as having been sunk. Uh, and usually when you have it on the ops report like this, it's guaranteed. So that's dead. And then the other thing I thought was interesting was this 258th U.S. Army Air Force Base Force at Tillamook. Tillamook. That's over here. And interestingly enough, there's actually a brand of dairy products here in the United States called Tillamook. Uh, they make like milks and and cheeses and and other you know dairy stuff. <laughs> I, I didn't actually know that was a real place, but apparently it is. And it appears to be in. Uh, I would say this is Oregon. And here's what you get: you get this base force that comes online here, but it's severely depleted, right? So this is what it has when it spawns on the map. That's what it's supposed to have. So as you can see. Uh, it's got a long way to go to be fully uh, ready to go and built up to its maximum capacity. So what you could do is you turn on upgrades or replacements or just replacements and forget the upgrades. And let it sit back here for a bit. Preferably move it to a base that has a HQ, like a command level HQ. That will help attract replacements to this unit faster. Uh, and then you build it up and once it's fully kitted out with everything it's supposed to have in its TONE, uh, you send it out. Okay, let's talk about the action. So in China, it was pretty quiet. Uh, well, at least in northern China. We had a bombardment up here in Lanchow. And if you watched just last turn's video, you know how I'm railing on Weiwei that it needs to be more aggressive and attack up here. But he didn't. And in the meantime, the Allies continue moving troops in. There you go, see? These guys are coming in. So just one unit right now, but it has an additional... Well... 49 assault streak. Okay, now I'm confused. I thought he was moving all these guys in, but he's only moving one unit's worth. But whatever, he's sending it in. It's still going to help. And every day that goes by that Weiwei doesn't attack, I think he could have pushed the, the Chinese troops out of here by now. But hey, what do I know? So, uh, we also got to see some pretty uh, extreme bombing here. We saw a port strike on Hong Kong. And we also saw an airfield and port strike on Haiphong. And these bases are way far away from the action, right? They should not even be like in contention here. But these crazy liberators have this incredible range, right? The B-24s can go up to 21 with extended bomb load. And Haiphong is 19 away. And then you have these Liberator Mark IIs which are British, they have a maximum extended range of 24, and uh, Desert Wolf found a base that was 24 hexes away, and that is a long drive. I can't believe that. And, you know, something that I don't understand here, and maybe you guys can help me out, is why does this Liberator 2 have so much more range than the B-24Ds? The only thing that I can see that's different is the bomb load. The, the armament's more or less a wash, right? But the B-24Ds are carrying 10 500-pound uh, bombs, right? And the Liberator Mark IIs are carrying 8 500-pound bombs. But that just seems kind of crazy to me to have that much more range due to a 1,000-pound less bomb load. But... Uh, I, without being able to crunch some numbers and stuff, I, I don't really understand the big difference between these two aircraft. Uh, they're more or less similar in terms of 
armament and stuff. They ha this one has a much has a lower altitude, but a higher climb rate, and a, just a, a massive a, a massive ranging benefit over the uh, B twenty four Ds. And by massive, yes, it's three, but that three is obviously allowing this thing to get really far. Um, but I, again, I, I don't know exactly why he attacked these bases. Maybe just to keep we're way off balance. Maybe just to kind of pick and prod around to see what's not defended. Uh, he hit some ships in port, did some damage to some airfields. Didn't find any aircraft on the ground. Uh, so, you know, I really don't know what the goal of that was. But hey, it was cool to watch and we'll see what else can happen with that in following turns. Uh, so basically, uh, also in this turn, Tungi got uh, cleaned up the rest of the way. I'm pretty sure there are now zero Japanese aircraft left here. They've relocated to places like Tavoy. Uh, and probably Bangkok as well. And that's really that's really it for... We're gonna, I think we can close the book, uh, stop reading this chapter... The Japanese attempts at being strong in Burma are probably over after this blowout that they have achieved this week. Achieved or received? The blowout they received. I don't see them capable of mounting any major offensive operations in here anymore because they just can't protect their airfields. And again, in the last video I made, I was uh, complaining about how powerful the Allied 4 engine bombers are, but you're seeing it right now, how powerful they are, how far they can reach and the damage they can do. I don't know how you even protect against that right now. The Japanese aircraft, he can put up all the aircraft he has in cap. They're still not stopping the bombers from getting through. So I don't really know what the answer is to that. We'll move all the way over to the marshals where it's getting pretty uh, busy. So here's the, um, the patrol sectors that the Allied submarines are moving into. We do see two Japanese subs based out of Mili at the moment. Uh, the S-39, I believe, no, it wasn't the S-39. It may have been the S-46. Yes, there it was. This is the sub that took out the 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 cruiser mine layer that was uh, somewhere in here. We'll take a look at this captain. Mm, okay, uh, decent naval skill. Aggression is medium, but he got the job done. S-46, they fired... Basically, it looks like four of their 12 torpedoes, but it's definitely worth it to take out a ship. If you look at the um, the map here, you can see there's a lot of shipping activity now. There seems to be a lot of recon missions going out from down here. And we're seeing quite a bit of uh, Japanese ships and shipping activity. A lot of subs. Some other sort of things. We have these guys also coming in towards Nauru. Uh, moving east. Uh, hopefully they drive through this sub picket line here and, and get engaged by these guys. That'd be cool to see that. And also this turn we had more bombing attacks on Nauru. Which caused further damage to the airfield. Destroyed more aircraft on the ground. And now we're seeing this. These P-38 Lightnings flying sweep missions over Nauru. So he's using a combination of P-38Es and P-38Gs. And check it out. There's our boy, Richard Bong. We're waiting for him to get some, some kills here. Uh, I hope that he does run into some action here pretty soon because I want to see how... How crazy this guy can get because he definitely is one of the most experienced pilots in the entire Allied inventory. So we'll see what he can do here, right? As far as like um, troop movements and stuff, we did see a convoy move up to Tarawa. These guys are still sitting here waiting for something to do. Up here in Alaska... Uh, near the Aleutian Islands, or in the Aleutian Islands, I should say, Amchatka, we got to see that these two amphibious task forces that we were looking at last turn pulled into this port. So my guess is that they're going to start loading up some of these troops here. 
Uh, but, you know, I don't really know where they're going to go after that. So, yeah, I think that's it. Uh, not much more to discuss on this one. Um, it's just going to be the more more scourge and terror of Allied 4 engine bombers for now. Uh, I'm still trying to figure out which direction uh, Desert Wolf is going to go. Is he going to go for Naru or is he going to go for Millie? Uh, let me know what your opinion is. What base is he going to go for next? It's going to be one of these two, you can bet. But which one do you think it's going to be? I'd love to hear your opinions. And until then, I'll catch you in the next one.